With this video I hope to aid the collaborative exploration of a just energy hub to work towards energy sovereignty and energy justice. The Just Energy Hub came into existence due to a donation of a 50 kW vertical axis wind turbine and its intellectual property rights from Eastern Wind Power to Olin College of Engineering. Renewable carbon-free energy is one way to address climate change because our planetary boundaries don't allow for much more carbon emissions. Engineers seem to be particularly concerned with making machines work, be efficient and do what we want them to do. And indeed, we need to learn much more about erecting the prototype tower, how to control the turbine and to create the off-the-grid electrical system. However, I want to ask what technology really means. As Ursula Franklin points out, a physicist and social activist, technology is how we do things around here. She defines it as a practice that inherently suggests that there may be other ways of doing something, putting an emphasis not only on what we do, but how we do it. We take the position that climate change has arisen from social structures. Geologists even call our time Anthropocene, an epoch marked by human activity. In the context of wind energy, we see the need for other forms of practice or technology besides figuring out how to control the wind turbine and build it. Modern technology has given us many sources of electricity. However, the bottom billion on this planet still doesn't have access to it. And even in the US, energy is inaccessible to many. Low-income families pay 30% upward for their energy. If remote regions are scarcely populated, the electricity supplier will not pay for a connection. Indigenous people from the Navajo Nation, for instance, live on land from which companies extract resources to create energy, but can't afford to pay for the connection to the nearest pole. This is just one example of energy poverty intertwined with colonialism. This brings up the question, so what does a practice of a just energy hub look like that seeks to address the systemic problems of underserving marginalized communities? Here we could draw inspiration from forms of research that change the relationship from a research object that we investigate to research subjects, forms of engagement in which co-participants are equals co-creating new knowledge with the intent to deconstruct power relationships and do something together. This asks for a technology of communication and working together that extends from humans to even electronics and mechanics. We could focus on creating intuitive interfaces and manuals so people feel competent enough to maintain the turbine, in a sense to actually have ownership over it. We could also think about platforms of collaboration where users can access open source code, share their own insights, essentially making the intellectual property and subsequent technologies a resource of the commons. Collaboration extends to decision-making and governance. How can a governance system incorporate the needs of the people it tries to serve, staying malleable and adaptive? How could the organization change its properties if partners express interest in remote farming irrigation? And then there are the humans that want to work in service of energy sovereignty. How can they be financially secure and have a healthy work life? All humans in this network will have their implicit biases. How can we change and build a practice, or again technology, to sense these hidden structures and blind spots that keep us from synthesizing the bigger picture on a personal and collective level? These are big complicated questions because humans are very complex, but this is not where the story ends. In the end we build a wind turbine with materials. Metal mines, for instance, are known to pollute their surrounding ecosystems to displace indigenous people and create social tension. Also, creating aluminum has a massive carbon footprint. Regarding electronics, globalized supply chains often involve cheap labor and toxic working conditions. Not to forget about wind turbine blades, which are built from carbon fiber or fiberglass composites and will end up in a landfill at the end of their cycle. Consequently, the question arises if there is any way to avoid using these destructive and oppressive systems, and we need to at least understand their impact. We could be bold and explore modular electronics to reduce waste and cooperate with worker-owned factories. But to be realistic, these changes will happen very slowly. What we can do though is to practice transparency and admit the social and environmental shortcomings of this project. Only when we admit where we have work left to do can we create solutions down the road. In the end, we want all living beings to thrive on this planet, not just those that have a wind turbine. I hope this short video helps to illustrate how difficult just energy really is.
For us engineers, there's a lot to learn, unlearn and explore because we see all of the mentioned topics as part of a responsible engineering practice.